now like to ask Dr. Karen Fonot, Fonot, excuse me, of uh, the University of Southeastern Louisiana. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm delighted to talk about the conference, but I'm a little afraid of the moderators. They've done such a good job at keeping everybody at five minutes or so, so I'm going to keep my comments necessarily short. I would like to thank the organizers once again. Uh, Dr. Weller did a very good job of thanking them, but this was one of the most um, informative and provocative and useful conferences on the issue I've been to to date. I've been involved in the movement since 2005 and I'm fortunate to live with my co-author, my husband Dr. Michael Fontenot, and we were asked to present a paper at that, that conference in 2005 at Rice University. And after we were finished, I told Mike this was such an interesting topic it's a shame there's nothing more to write about. Well, five years ago, we're just finding out that we're skimming the surface. There is so much to write about the Hizmet movement. And in part, I think it's because it's such a dynamic movement. It's a movement that is not static, it doesn't stay still. And as the, the um, panelists discussed today, it's a movement that's composed of individuals. Uh, Although, I think that Dr. Eva had a very good point, and I'd like to follow up on that, when she said that members of the Hizmet movement, of which I consider myself one, as does Father Michel, I, I agree with him, I'm not a Muslim and I'm not a Turk, but I believe that I am a member of the Hizmet movement. And she said all the members seem to share something in common. You could recognize them. And I think we have to attribute that to Fethullah Gulen because he is the one who saw a need, who communicated the vision, who has done it so eloquently, and also who has provided a place for every single member. He's also the one who has allowed the individuals to feel appreciated in every single effort. No matter what you do, Father Michel points out often that the people who greet us at the airport are serving a very important function. The people who contribute money are serving a very important function. The women, and Dr. Curtis, it often is the women, who provide the food for the iftar dinners are oftentimes unseen and unrecognized. They're providing a very important hizmet. And so I think we, although it is a vertical communication and certainly there is no one person that's a leader, there is somebody who has the vision and who has been able to inspire and transform the movement. And so certainly we need to set that. And to, to conclude, I'm just going to uh, give a personal account. Um, a few weeks ago, somebody that I work with on the schools, and this the advisor, I'm on the advisory board of the schools, the Golan schools in, in Louisiana, and um, he looked at me and said, you would make a very good Muslim wife. <laughs> and I was immensely flattered. I, I came home and told my husband, I was so flattered because I know these women. I've worked with these women, and they are among the most accomplished, intelligent, educated, hard-working women. I admire them so much, I don't know how they find enough hours in the day. And I asked one once, I said, you're a professor, you're writing, you take care of your family, how do you do it? And she said, well, Fethullah Gulen is writing books and he doesn't sleep very much, so why should I? So I'll conclude on that note. Thank you very much.